Welcome to another episode of Theological Thursday. My name is Nicole and it is an honor to serve you on today. Over the past few weeks, we have been talking about worship. And so I want to continue that discussion and we're going to close it out tonight. Also, I want to let you know that this video will be in four different parts. So when we talked about worship, we talked about how um, the Hebrew word shaka and shaka is uh, made up of three letters, the shin, the chet and the hay. Um, and we looked at it from a Paleos Hebrew uh, forum. Uh, with the Paleos Hebrew, we know that the letters actually uh, have a message within themselves. And so the shin is like uh, something that would consume, something that would destroy or something that would press. And then we talked about how the chet was like a fence. It was a gate. So it was a place of ret refuge, um, an inner room or court, a sanctuary, if you will. And then we talked about the hay, which is um, kind of like a surrendering, uh, looking up, paying attention, um, and, and uh, paying attention to what we need to follow, right? So when we put that together, we understand that worship is something that consumes, it destroys, um, it presses, it also is a place of refuge, it has an inner court, um, it's a protective factor, and it is a place by something, it is also something by which we behold and something that we look up towards. Um, and then when we look at worship as a lifestyle, we understand that we are supposed to take that definition of worship, that sense of consuming, that place of refuge, that sanctuary, and beholding a particular thing in our lifestyle, right? And when we do that, we understand that we worship him in spirit and in truth. We're not conformed to the world, but we are transformed by the renewing of our, of our mind. Why? Because we behold the glory of God. And because we allow our worship, our commune with him to destroy the old nature, we allow his spirit to consume us and we find refuge from the things of this world in him. And so in our day to day, as we walk that out, um, our thoughts are not our own, um, but they align with the Messiah and we allow him to be the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. So um, from there, we talked about strange fire and we looked at what strange fire looked like, uh, particularly in the book of Job. Um, I provided a different uh, theological explanation of what exactly happened with Job um, and that he was giving sacrifices um, to God, not knowing if his children had sinned. Um, so he was... Uh, committing idolatry, which is like the worst sin, right? To put something um, in front of God or to include yourself or insert yourself. And we learn from doing the presentation on uh, Strange Fire that Job feared something. Because in chapter 3, I believe it's verse 25, he says, the thing that I feared and the thing that I dread had come upon me. And we looked at how fear um, led to uh, his idolatry. It was fear that motivated his actions and caused him to profane the altar of God um, and give sacrifices not to God, but uh, as a protective factor. And so I think as we button up uh, the, the series on worship, I think it's important that we do a word study on fear. So that is what tonight's Theological Thursdays is all about. It's about fear. And I wanted to provide a good summary of everything that has been discussed so you're caught up and you understand um, exactly where fear will play into those things. So before we go any further, let's have a word of prayer. Abba, I thank you for the opportunity to minister to your people. Lord, I pray that you would just get the increase, um, that you would minister to the hearts and minds of the hearers and viewers of this video, um, that you would be glorified in the name of Yehoshua HaMashiach. Amen. So when we look at fear, we find that fear 
in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word yara and yar. Okay, they are both nouns and verbs. Um, and it is defined as fear, dread, terror, timidity, um, timidity. And then it's also defined as wonderful, stupendous, reverence, and awe. So in the passages where we see that we are to fear the Lord, it's the latter part of that definition. It's dealing with the wonderful, stupendous, reverence, awe, or even worship, okay? That is what we're talking about here. And then uh, where you have people acting out of fear or their actions are uh, motivated by fear or what happens to them is the result of fear. Uh, we see fear being defined as fear, dread, terror, and timidity. Um, in the Greek, we have the word phobos and phobi. And that is terror, alarm, reverence, or respect, okay? Um, and so we have the similarities between the two languages. What we know in reference to fear is that fear has two categories. Um, they have the category of what is beneficial and those things that are baneful, okay? And so let's look at references to people that fear God. When we look at um, Exodus 18 and verse 22, we see that um, God instructs uh, Moses to pick judges that fear God, right? Or when we go into the New Testament, and Acts 10, I believe it's verse 2, we see that Cornelius was a God-fearing man. In both instances, what's happening is that these people reverenced God. They worshiped God. Okay, and so let's look at um, demonstrating the fear of God. We'll look at a real good demonstration. And I have a bunch of passages here and examples that talks about demonstrating the fear of God. But before we get to that, we'll go to the next video. I'll see you there.